Trump, in the four years of office, issued about 450 executive actions on immigration. And that was seen as, uh, as an activist presidency on immigration. Biden has been in office only for six months. And I'm here to tell you that in the first six months of the Biden administration, 155 immigration actions have been taken. I don't want to do the math here. That would suggest to me that he is going three times the rate as Trump, which was considered an immigration uh, a presidency on steroids. So we just we just follow the scorecard. Whether it's Trump or Biden, and scorecard so far suggests that he has been really very, very strong on immigration actions. Of the 155 actions, half of them have been unwinding Trump and other half have been improving on pre-Trump policy. So you could say using Trump, using Biden's language, half of them have been building back better, that improving things that prior democratic administrations we're not able to do, and I'm glad to do that uh, in, in, uh, in question and answer. But let's see what he has done. In the, on the very first day of his administration, when you compare that with other issues of national security and global warming and Iran and nuclear stuff, he issued about seven executive actions on immigration. On day one, he rescinded all of travel bans that President Trump had put in, uh, in, in motion, which brought us uh, sort of bad press in all of the world. He paused border wall construction, which had become a hallmark of Trump presidency. He reversed uh, Trump's policy on not counting unauthorized in the census. He revoked Trump's past in directives on interior enforcement. He said that he would expand and preserve DACA. He reinstated uh, the deferred enforcement for librarians. And then most importantly, on that very day, he sent to Congress a blueprint for what he believed was going to be his imprint on immigration reform, which sort of became uh, the, uh, his, his, his main immigration reform package for legalization of the 11 million people. The Trump administration to me was defined by one thing more than any other thing. It was a statement issued by ICE director Tom Homan, one saying that every unauthorized person should be looking over their shoulder every day. That was what became the Trump mantra, that all 11 million unauthorized people are fair game. They're as they're fair game for ICE officers at the, at the grassroots level, at the, at the super. We should make no distinction among the unauthorized. So at the end of the administration, all 11 million people were a priority for the Trump administration for removal. Biden reversed them on day one. It can be said with one stroke of pen, he reversed the priorities and he said, immigration priorities of this administration are only going to be high criminals or recent arrivals. MPI calculations suggest that 87% of the unauthorized population today have nothing to worry about enforcement. That means ordinary status violators who are not criminals can leave their home in the morning and be reasonably sure that they can come home at night and see their kids, which we could not guarantee at the end of the Trump administration. I don't know about the rest of you. To me, that's existential change in the lives of 11 million people. Um, under Across administrations, under the Obama administration, under the Trump administration, and under the Biden administration, there is this expression on the part of the government that these policies at the border are to help ensure orderly processing, to ensure that migrants are not subject to um, organized crime or, or human trafficking or nefarious characters. But what Title 42, it really does is it creates an open market for organized crime and for human traffickers. And since Title 42 has been in place, uh, the number of people that we encounter that have been victims of organized crime, either through kidnapping and extortion of their family members in the United States or in home country, or have been victims of forced labor or sex trafficking has increased exponentially. Um, the problem with kidnappings of migrants at the border uh, uh, under Title 42 has, has risen dramatically. Um, and what we see is tens of thousands of dollars, U.S. dollars, being sent to organized crime in Mexico in order to rescue their family members. 
Really troubling also under Title 42 is the expulsion of migrants that have um, either fallen onto uh, from the wall um, onto the U.S. side um, and have very severe injuries and need medical attention, uh, as well as women in active labor who have been sent back to Mexico in active labor instead of being transported by Border Patrol after being apprehended to a U.S. hospital where they could give birth, uh, give birth to their child safely. I also uh, want to just say that not having people tell you that you're evil and horrible all the time uh, is a psychic um, benefit to all of us. Um, you know, Fridays during the Trump administration were always the worst day of the week because we thought, what, what are they going to drop on us today? Other things, uh, so as I was saying, they, they, they've translated this into tangible policies. And what does that mean? Well, ICE and uh, DHS have issued policies saying to their attorneys, to their detention officers, don't detain these people. Don't put these people into removal proceedings. If there is a way for you to help a person by agreeing to join a claim for relief, if there's a way for you to help somebody by reopening a case, so that they get the chance to apply for something that they seem qualified for, do that. When someone's in removal proceedings or has a removal order, there's two ways to get that case done and resolved and over. One way is to deport the person. The other way is to let them apply for something that they can get. Both, one is creates a deportee, the other creates a permanent resident. Either way, you are bringing down the undocumented population. And if that's a goal, um, they should be equally useful ways for ICE to uh, address these millions of people in deportation proceedings.